to get all this wood out. Yeah. This is for the garage. Okay. <laughs> Can you count count for me as I put them up? One, two, three, three, two, four, five, six, nine, eight, eight. Do you remember what this is made from? Um, I know. Go on. Bottle. Bottle. Yes. Plastic bottle. Plastic bottle. Good girl. Okay. It's a bit like what you put in cushions. Yeah. Pardon? Yeah. Right. What I want you to do, to start doing, is you're gonna take bits like this. I got some. Big bits. Okay. And you start stuffing it. So whilst I'm using a bit of child labour here, I'll explain what we're doing. So the, the walls we're going to insulate um, in a future video, but whilst I got their help I figured I would use them to help me with the ribs on the side. But this is what we're doing today for the roof as well. The main job today is to get the ceiling done, or the roof, and we're going to insulate that with uh, rigid insulation boards. But what we're going to do is on the ribs of the roof, we're going to use this uh, soft insulation, which is a plastic bottle recycled insulation, uh, just to stuff into the ribs. I don't really want to use the expanding foam where possible, and I can get the kids to help with this stuff. And this doesn't itch or anything like that, and it's not becoming airborne at all, so it's nice and safe to use. Um, it's no different from the wadding you'd have in a pillow. You're helping. Mummy, we're doing this. We're doing this. Look, mummy, I did all of this. Brilliant! I, I just like, I didn't know there was any of it so quiet. Boots, yeah, big boots. So the next detail we want to make sure we cover is these ribs slope out. So if you were to try and wedge an insulation board in here, there's no friction at all, and it would just slip out. And that's when you see people propping stuff up gunning it all in with foam, foam getting everywhere, and then having to cut everything off. All right, let's uh, just use our integrated whiteboard here for a quick diagram. So I just wanted to show you basically how we're doing the ribs and also how other people tend to do it. They just measure between. And then what they do is they put expanding foam or sticky foam on top of this. They wedge poles up here while stuff drips everywhere and then they, they spray in here expanding foam and stuff's like dripping down here all over the floor making a right mess and you'll see that on multiple videos and then of course you've got this this void here within the ribs and when you spray foam you put your nozzle in the holes and you spray foam in here of course that is a good insulation value but it expands with quite a lot of pressure and what can happen, and I've read lots of accounts of this, is the sheet metal bulges up, or even worse, it pulls the adhesive from the, uh, the, the panel and the ribs, and you end up distorting the van from the outside. So here's a little look at the method I've come up with, which is theory, and I've never done it before, but it seems to be common sense to me. My plan is to put 12 mil strips of plywood here, which rather than just being the surface area at the bottom of the rib, it'll be measured from the width of the widest part. Then rather than using the spray foam inside these ribs, there is holes. So before I put the plywood on, I just did a full fill by tucking in loads of the uh, fluffy plastic insulation that we're using, just like a recycled plastic bottle insulation. And really all that's doing is just filling that space, making sure that's um, not kind of a cold air space in there. Um, and then before I put, by extending these to the longest part, it means that we can just cut really nice parallel cut strips of the insulation board, which we'll put in here. And 30 millimeters on this fan 
brings you really nice and flush to the bottom of these plywood strips. So that's our insulation board and, and there is a tiny triangle of space either side. So before I push the insulation board up I'm going to run a very small bead of expanding foam there and there, push the board in and then that will expand and grip onto the board and I'll have no voids at all. And then all we'll do to finish is carry the foil face of this on over each plywood by putting a strip of tape either side. So apologies about that school lesson, but let's go and put that theory into practice. So we'll remove the bottom trim of both of the roof lights so we can batten and tuck everything under there neatly. All of the strips are up now and I'm quite impressed with how that's worked. I've put a small bead of Sikaflex on the back just to use up the tube but also to reduce any risk of squeaks but also down the far end uh, as you can have a look at this little bit of footage now you can see that I've had to wedge with all sorts of uh, bike helmets and boxes and stuff to get a good pressure up because uh, I'm just going to use the adhesive up there left a small gap here just because this is the feed for the fan so I just kind of bring that through so the last remaining strip where the cladding on the ceiling will finish is on the back here but there's no rib as such so I need to kind of work out this back light can probably come out now and the way I'll do that is just to get a straight edge running along all of the battens and then fix the batten in there. So as always, I'm sure that's quite a long-winded way of doing it, but by making sure they're completely parallel and that our gaps along here are the same all the way along, it means when we cut our insulation, they'll slot straight in, they'll hold in anyway, and we won't have to worry about foaming everything up. Um, so by spending a little bit more time getting this accurate, should make it uh, a bit easier and quicker in the long run. But one thing to note is if you weren't going to have a vapour barrier and you were just screwing tongue and groove panelling to the ribs itself without a strip, these screws or any visible screws uh, like you sometimes see people use will conduct the cold or, or not conduct the cold but you know they will be a, a cold bridge coming through from the outside temperature because unless you've filled all these ribs that they're going to be cold air in there so um, those screws will be cold and you'll get condensation forming just on the screw heads and that could lead to them rusting but because we're taping over here no moisture can get to the screw heads so no, no condensation can hopefully occur so that's <laughs> So it's the next morning and I'm just trying to finish off what I didn't get done last night. And if there was ever any doubt of how strong the adhesive is, that Sikaflex, then where I had propped up this, this, this is just on adhesive alone. It is just, I'm literally using all my 
strength to pull that. And this was only a fairly, fairly thin bead. That is just absolutely solidly bonded up here. So this is the last panel, apart from the right at the back, uh, last panel to go in. And hopefully all of our rails, uh, all of our battens are parallel, which is why I did that. So that we can just cut everything at the same time as one straight cut. I just cut the last of the insulation uh, for this last bit, which is going up to the trim at the end. And what I did is just ripped a small strip of plywood and uh, had to notch it out a little bit. But then I held up a straight edge across the ones that we know are uh, flat with each other and holding up a metal straight edge and I marked on here in the middle, screwed that one in, bit of sealant as well. Um, screwed that one in and then again just held up the straight edge in a couple of places so it follows the exact contour of the rest of the van so everything looks smooth and then I've measured up the distance here now when it comes to cutting and measuring uh, all the insulation when we did the loft conversion I did a video on how to or like how I um, measure and cut this type of insulation that's quite handy little tips on there as far as just using the tape measure to mark and of course, make, making sure you've got a dust mask and things like that. So uh, you can click the, I'll try and do a card. If not, I'll put it at the end of the video. You don't really need to use foam uh, here. And like I said, if you get these battens in right and you cut everything nice, nice and snug, you don't have to start messing around with loads of foam. I'm just gonna put a tiny bit in there because it will just help to anchor it. Um, and from experience, the heat does funny things, you know, the, this plywood, although it's very stable, if you were using softwood battens, they'll probably shrink a tiny bit. If these were just friction fitted, they could get a bit loose and then you might hear stuff as you're driving. So by foaming that will just kind of anchor it in, that's all we're using it for. So we need to put a cap on, and that's only because I don't want it dropping on my head. But you'll notice that I put this bead in, it's not dripping everywhere, it's nice and tidy, and that's all we need, that bead. Everything doubles, if not more, in size. So the most common mistake is just to use too much, whether it's in the building, you know, in housing, or in a van, people tend to just go a bit crazy with it. So as that expands in, it will just kind of grip onto the boards, onto the foam of the boards, and just hold them in place. So I've had a little look um, down the edges and that foam, that little bead of foam has expanded perfectly. There's no void at all now. So um, I'm pretty confident that these are not going anywhere, but also we've got no air gaps there. So next time I get a free minute, I'll come out, finish those three, and then we'll tape up the whole reef to get our vapor barrier. So that's the last piece in down that far end. The back of the van bows out slightly, so I cut that one in half to account for that. And then there was about a three mil gap down the middle, I just foamed in. Um, and also you're gonna have, whereas everywhere else, we haven't really been in touch with the metal. Uh, whereas at the back, it does just rest upon the metal at the back. So that's another reason for the foam. Otherwise, PIR type insulation really does squeak against the metal.
Right, so just finish up these last few bits. And then I think I'll call it a day and we'll pick up the cladding uh, kind of phase tomorrow.